So disarmament socialists such as Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren and others, Kirsten Gillibrand, they're not the only, only politicians whose policies pose a threat to our Second Amendment. They have their extremist foot soldiers on the ground doing the dirty work for them too. Anti-gun advocacy groups like the AstroTurfed groups founded by Michael Bloomberg, founded and funded like Moms Demand Action, for instance, their latest target is Missouri, where they promise that they're going to bring more than 400 people to a rally at the Capitol on Tuesday in support of House Bill 960, which would require law enforcement to take away an individual's firearms without any due process at all whatsoever in the event of a domestic violence call. Moms Demand is also going to rally against a bill that would expand the right of law-abiding Missouri gun owners to carry concealed firearms. One of the leaders for Moms Demand Action discussed their, their motivations here. Right now there is no protection uh, that reflects the federal law that keeps guns out of the hands of people with dangerous histories of domestic abuse and we really need one in Missouri. So we'll be advocating for a, a bill that was filed last week. What's interesting is that this group and the other Bloomberg founded and funded groups have been notoriously silent on legislation that would actually fast track applications for victims of domestic violence to go and get a firearm and receive training and get their concealed carry permit quickly. Um, they've actually been opposing it through silence and pretending that it doesn't exist. And these groups also very interestingly have been incredibly quiet about the candidates that they have previously endorsed and candidates that they support in the upcoming disarmament primary ahead of 2020. These candidates who have all come out completely against. They rejected, if you go back to what we discussed a couple of uh, days ago, or perhaps it was last week, how House Democrats actually defeated uh, a legislation that would have allowed uh, law enforcement to be notified if someone who is in the country illegally attempted to purchase a firearm and failed their 4473, their background check. And so there was nothing from these so-called gun safety advocacy groups because it's not about safety. It's about advocacy of disarmament. They have been entirely silent when they're the party that they typically vote for, typically support, and by typically I mean 111% of the time, whenever, time and time again, whenever they fail to enforce the law on the books, such as what I just mentioned in California, just record low prosecutions of felony gun crime. So where are these individuals at? Typically, you can find them on social media harassing law-abiding Second Amendment mothers by calling them gun horse. So that's apparently the extent of the advocacy. Uh, but they are motivated, and everybody should be more motivated, and everybody should have a great sense of urgency, urgency and make our voices louder than this very inconsistent group. We are the majority, and we should be consistent. But that does not mean because we are the majority that we can rest or be apathetic.